We're back. We're live. Welcome back to Think Tech. Here we're on Likeable Science on a Friday at 2 p.m. That's what we do at 2 p.m. on Friday. And we have Ethan Allen, who is our host on Likeable Science. And he is in Aloha Tower, two blocks away. Um, but he is there with the uh, Hawaii Public Health Association at the 2016 Hawaii Public Health uh, Conference. And in fact, he has guests and people that he is going to interview. Uh, so welcome to your own show, Ethan. <laughs> Thank you, Jay. It's good to be here. You take uh, it from here, Ethan. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and with, with me I have Dr. Christian Gloria. Welcome, Christian. Thank you, Ethan. Thank you, Jay. Right. Um, thank you for, uh, for the invitation. I'm happy to be here. Christian is, is the person largely responsible for getting this conference together, and it's been a remarkable event. We're in, in day three of a three-day conference. We're winding it on down. We've had hundreds of people here, public health workers, doctors, nurses. Nurses, educators, policymakers, uh, stakeholders, uh, pretty much really everybody in the community who's interested and involved in uh, public health. And the, the big theme of this conference is health is everyone's kuleana, right? Everyone's responsibility. We've all right. And so the theme this year is uh, health is everyone's kuleana, uh, building community uh, uh, momentum to promote action. And so we are trying to push for the, uh, the concept that we do a lot of talking, but it's about time that we start really working together and, and actually making change. Yeah, and this, this gets to this idea of uh, collective impact. Some of the public health challenges are these very large so-called wicked problems, right? And no one agency or one group can solve them. They have many, the roots lie in many places, social status, economic factors, environmental factors, civil factors, policies. So it takes a lot of different groups working together to, to address them effectively. Right, exactly. And so as I have conversations with many different uh, public health uh, professionals, whether they're doctors, nurses, educators, policymakers, uh, nonprofit organization managers, uh, what we realize is we do a lot of great things on our own, uh, but without that collective effort, it's really not taking us where we need to be. And so we continue to, to face and see the same problems that we've faced for many, many years. Uh, and we're making effort, but not fast enough because the problems are only getting worse. Uh, and so hopefully as we uh, join forces together and, and, and come together in conferences like these and have these conversations, I will be able to find ways to actually collaborate and cooperate. Exactly. It's sort of this race between these escalating problems and our advancing abilities and, and willingness to collaborate with one another, that, that, which, was, which is going to win. <laughs> right. Exactly. Uh, well, are you working on some of these uh, high-profile items? For example, uh, the Genki Sushi disease, uh, uh, Zika. Uh, what about SARS? Is there any action on SARS? And what about mental health in Hawaii? There's all kinds of talk about that. Is that within public health? Yes, uh, actually, the, I'm glad you asked that question because the repeating theme that we've heard through all of our speakers locally, uh, statewide or nationally, uh, it's all about the fact that everything is public health. Even if you are in the Department of Transportation, uh, that is public health. Even if you're in business and finance, that is public health. Because at the end of the day, it impacts all of our well-being uh, and, and the stressfulness, like you said, that could impact our mental health as well as our, our physical health. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, are, so you we, are you tackling some of these uh, headline stories like Zika? So we did talk about, we had some sessions on Zika as well as, uh, as, well as some of the other epidemics that we're facing today. Uh, I don't remember seeing a session on SARS. Uh, it seems that, uh, that Hep A and uh, there's a session right now actually that's going on discussing efforts on Hep A and prevention in Hawaii. Uh, so it did take, for example, a whole community to figure out where, uh, where the, the infection was coming from. And so that's why it took us a long time having to work from different sectors within the community to figure out, for example, like you said, that uh, it may have come from Genki Sushi, uh, among other places. And, and ultimately, they found out that it, it might have come sourced from the Philippines. Uh, it took a long time because it involved a lot of people to find out where these uh, epidemics might be starting. Right. Yeah, you know, this is very, a lot of public health is not sort of simple diagnosis of a disease and right. treat the disease. It's, it's looking at, in many cases, the, the social determinants of, of health in a large scale. Right, exactly. Well, it, often it's a matter of health infrastructure. I mean, for example, um, a laboratory, 
uh, a biosafety laboratory, say a class three biosafety laboratory, um, such as uh, had been contemplated in Kaka'ako, and I think it was also contemplated in Waimanu Home Road. Um, and the question is, is this being discussed? And how important is infrastructure like that uh, re regional biosafety laboratory for public health in Hawaii? Oh, yes, tough questions. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> my area of expertise but i do know that for example uh that there are some construction happening in downtown uh for for such things as those laboratories that you're mentioning uh given our location given our our very small size uh in terms of our land and the fact that our land's always moving whether it's an earthquake whether it's a tsunami or a hurricane we do have to make sure that we we talk about all the potential uh ways that uh, 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 of keeping our, our infrastructure safe, right? Um, and so with all the constructions happening that I know about uh, in, in, for example, at Fort Street Mall in downtown, so that is one of those things that everybody's asking questions about. Mm -hmm. So we're being very careful and making sure that our infrastructure is very safe uh, one way or another. Mm -hmm. Infrastructure affects public health in other ways too. That is, the whole infrastructure of neighborhoods impacts the health of the residents there. Are there neighborhoods that are friendly, encourage people to get out and walk? Right. People get more exercise, they encourage people to interact, people get more socializing. All of these things are important to people's well being on, on various levels. So, yeah, this is what exactly what Christian was saying earlier. This isn't just about health professionals, right? it involves everyone. Yeah, it's really about building that community that promotes health naturally, right? And so just like what Ethan said, I'm actually very passionate about the built environment. Uh, and I know we've had some effort here in Hawaii, mm -hmm. uh, for example, building more sidewalks and bike lanes uh, so that we could promote uh, using of bikes and walking with each other and, and making sure that our, our communities and our sidewalks are safe enough that people will actually use it. Uh, I do think uh, we have still a long way to go. Uh, I've been in different communities in the mainland, uh, particularly in Austin, Texas, where I had gone to school for 15 years, um, where we were quite progressive in making sure that we had very bike-friendly, pedestrian-friendly lanes, uh, and that we had safe communities so that, that people will actually use them and go to parks where they can be more physically active. Yes. You know, one of the, uh, the big concerns, I think, that I would have about public health is whether our public health uh, organizations, uh, such as they are, and however they are coordinated, you know, among all of them, um, are adequately prepared for uh, extreme storms. Because, uh, mm -hmm. you know, one of the things that happens as a result of an extreme storm, of course, is that public health is affected, sometimes dramatically. You've seen that in so many places, most mm -hmm. recently, I think, in the Philippines. Um, mm -hmm. And I wonder where we are on that, and wonder whether your conference here at Aloha Tower is covering that. You know, I, I'll be honest with you, I wish we had more discussion on that, not only in the conference, but really all throughout the state, or really all of the uh, our neighbor island friends uh, throughout the Pacific, uh, especially myself who was born and raised in the Philippines, so I'm very familiar with those kinds of problems. Uh, I'm actually quite vocal about having that conversation, uh, even very locally, like for example at the university level. Uh, I often question, especially with the new development and the new opening of Aloha Tower, being a, a now a Hawaii Pacific University facility. Uh, that is one of the first questions I asked uh, when they were still showing us the master plan. Uh, what is the evacuation plan? What is the emergency response uh, in case something happens? And it's funny you mentioned that. I had was actually talking to the event coordinator here at ATM just yesterday. And sort of kind of in jest, uh, that's sort of how I approach these things lately. I asked her, so what, now that we have a conference here, we've got at least 250 people uh, attending uh, this facility, which is beautifully at the waterfront. What is the evacuation plan? Uh, is that part of our uh, obligation as the host of this organi organization mm -hmm. to talk about what the evacuation plan is at the start? And, and the response to me was that, well, they have an obligation to the students, the residents who live upstairs, but because we are just sort of a transient group, uh, that they're, they're not necessarily obligated by law or any kind of policy for us to have an emergency <laughs> plan for our conference. Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> and so uh, it makes me nervous. Uh, and so it's not, unfortunately, it's not only a, a, an issue of concern for small gatherings like this. Uh, it's, it's a concern for all of our islands. Um, I was just at, at disaster preparedness training uh, a couple of months ago and they talked about how if we 
are faced with the uh, extreme tsunami, the super tsunami that we are pretty much overdue for, uh, we can expect our, all of our coasts to be at least 30 feet underwater. And, and really nobody wants to think about it, nobody wants to talk about it, right. and we still continue to live in places that are very dangerous. Uh, but a lot of work still needs to be done, a lot of talking needs to be done, and, and I'll be honest, it makes me nervous. And I know I'm one of the few people when I move into a new apartment, I make sure I'm away from the flood zones and I'm high up on the mountains so that I don't have to possibly uh, deal with these kinds of problems. Yeah, but isn't, isn't that true that, uh, that a storm and, and uh, uh, water coming in on the land uh, and affecting our systems, our, our plumbing, our water systems, our sewage systems and so forth has almost an immediate effect on public health? And, and it can be disastrous. It can wipe out populations. And I don't think people realize that. Right, because within the first three days, if your drinking water system goes down, in the first three days, if people are running out of water, they're starting to die. Yeah, absolutely. And so one of the things that I actually learned in my training a few months ago for disaster response and preparedness, uh, we have to make sure that we train our community members and, and find community leaders uh, who could take the lead in case of an emergency and in case of situations where responders are unable to get into the communities, uh, maybe because roads are destroyed or blocked, uh, we'd have to train our community members and community leaders to make sure that uh, they can self-sustain themselves uh, for at least a week, if not two weeks, because it could take that long for responders to get to those communities uh, because our roads are so limited. And oftentimes, it, we only have one in and out pathway from one neighborhood to another. Well, we're going to take a break in a minute, but let me ask you uh, one more question uh, just uh, in the interim, Christian. And that is, uh, this is the first time uh, a conference of this nature, magnitude, uh, you know, in consequence, uh, is being held at Aloha Tower. I mean, we had the Hawaii uh, annual code challenge uh, in one of the multi-purpose rooms uh, over the past month or so, but that was small compared to the conference you're involved now. How are the facilities? Uh, and this is this is a new a new deal here for uh, Hawaii P Pacific University. How how is it working? It yeah, just like uh, Ethan's response. Uh, right. It's very well received. It's yeah. uh, it's a beautiful facility. It's uh, everything's brand new, renovated. Uh, we have great waterfront views. Uh, we have restaurants like Gordon Biersch, uh, and we're also very much ingrained with the academic culture. Uh, so it's a great place for learning and for co having conversations and creating networks. Uh, and it's also a great way to connect professionals with students uh, because students are always wanting to have opportunities to be uh, a participant in these conversations and so it's been a it's been a great venue in that sense uh, we, we are uh, nicely located downtown surrounded by all of many of the nonprofit health organizations and so it's been very convenient uh, for everybody so it's been great and i highly recommend the aloha tower marketplace all right we may not be able to pry ethan out of there eh <laughs> no, it's very, it's much it has very different ambiance than a standard conference center. You know, yes. where you're just in these big conference rooms all the time. Here, you can wander out and outside, and it's, it's really very pleasant. Great. That's great. Sign sign of things to come. More conferences there in the future. Okay, then we're going to short break. That's uh, Christian uh, Gloria, uh, PhD from uh, HPU Public Health, and of course our host Ethan Allen. We'll be right back. Aloha, my name is Josh Green. I serve as Senator from the Big Island on the Kona side, and I'm also an emergency room physician. My program here on Think Tech is called Healthcare in Hawaii. I'll have guests that should be interesting to you twice a month. We'll talk about issues that range from mental health care to drug addiction to our health care system and any challenges that we face here in Hawaii. We hope you'll join us. Again, thanks for supporting Think Tech. Hi, I'm Stacy Hayashi, and you can catch me on Mondays at 11 on Think Tech Hawaii. Stacy to the rescue. See you then. Aloha. It's summertime in Honolulu, Hawaii. My name is Stephen Philip Katz. I'm your host for Shrink Wrap Hawaii. We're on every Tuesday at 3 o'clock, and we talk about mental health and general health. Join us. Thank you. Hello, my name is Crystal. 
Let me tell you, my talk show, I'm all about health. It's healthy to talk about sex. It's healthy to talk about things that people don't talk about. It's healthy to discuss things that you think are unhealthy because you need to talk about it. So I welcome you to watch Quok Talk and engage in some provocative discussions on things that do relate to healthy issues and have a well-balanced attitude in life. Join me. Aloha. My name is John Waihe. And I actually had a small part to do with what's happening today. Served actually in public office. But if you don't already know that, here's a chance to learn more about what's happening in our state by joining me for Talk Story with John Waihe every other Monday. Thank you, and I look forward to your seeing us in the future. One. We're back, we're live, we're here again. Think Tech Hawaii, likable science on a given Friday at 2 p.m. with our host, Ethan Allen, who is um, doing on location here uh, at Aloha Tower with uh, the Hawaii Public Health Association in the 2016 Hawaii Public Health Association Conference. And his guest now, he's had a second guest, is uh, Tom Quaid. Uh, so welcome to the show, Tom. Well, thank you very much. It's good to be here. Ethan, why don't you reveal what Tom does and why he's there? <laughs> Tom generously came out to, to talk with us. He is the president-elect of the American Public Health Association, the big national uh, organization of which the Hawaii Public Health Association is just one, one, fifth, one, one fiftieth. Of, one of 54, <laughs> uh, 54 affiliates, yes. 54 yeah. members, right. So uh, he runs the whole show, basically, and he's a longtime public health practitioner, as he likes to say, from... Uh, Marion County, Ohio, the health commissioner there, has been actively involved in all kinds of health, uh, public health uh, approvals and uh, I don't say authorizations, but uh, yeah, accreditation the, processes, uh, and is a, is a, gave wonderful talks here, yeah. both at our annual meeting and then now at the conference. Yeah, Tom, you know, it strikes me that uh, with the with the speed at which uh, medical research takes place and the speed, for that matter, at which epidemics take place, uh, the whole field of public health has to become more and more global. And you've probably seen those trends, those sea changes in the past few years, uh, you know, in your role with public health. Can you describe that to us? What is the global process? What do you see happening in the field of public health? Sure. Well, actually, global is a very good way to describe public health, not only in the, the most literal terms of, of uh, international and, and global uh, thinking, but in terms of, of, of systems, because public health, uh, there truly isn't anything that's more than a, a degree or two separated from the actual specific field of public health, uh, whether it's environmental or it's, it's uh, uh, related to communicable disease or health policy or health care. Any of those things, those are all part of the, uh, under the big umbrella of public health. So whenever there's a conversation going on, whether it's a local conversation uh, that's just sort of a, a microcosm of something that's going on at the global level, or it's a, a global conversation about something, you know, for example, like, uh, like climate change, these are all public health issues. They all have, have trickle-down effects on, on uh, uh, individuals um, as, and, and their health but also populations and the health of a population in general. Um, we're, we're doing a much better job, I think, in public health of drawing attention to issues that, that are uh, um, more emergent, uh, things like Zika, uh, things like climate change, things like, uh, and, and, you know, any, any uh, um, reemergence of uh, uh, back what, were, what are vaccine preventable diseases or superbugs, uh, things that are becoming uh, resistant to, to, to uh, historical treatments. Those are all on our radar, uh, mm -hmm. and it's, it's, it's a big radar. <laughs> well, you know, I, I guess it was about a year ago that Hawaii had a, a huge conference about brain research. We had it in the Hawaii Convention Center, and there were a huge number of people from all over the world who were involved in brain research. And I walked up to the table with my cameraman, and there were three or four fellows sitting around the table, and I said, you know, can we get some comments from you? And they said, no, you can't. We're busy writing a paper right now at this table. We're collaborating. Watch us collaborate and leave us alone. And I took that, you know, as a good-natured remark. But the fact is, this is all about collaboration. Can, yes. <coughs> can you give us an example of how collaboration takes place at this conference now on public health? 
Sure. And, and the, so the first example that comes to mind is, uh, is the collaboration between the academic institutions and the, and the public health association and, and the, the various uh, uh, entities that the public health association represents, whether they're practitioners or they're policy folks. So at the systems level, there's tremendous collaboration between the association the, and the academic institutions. The academic institution here is really supporting this, uh, the, the venue. Uh, and, and to, to allow this conference to happen. My participation uh, with the, my role at, at the American Public Health Association uh, uh, and being an, an invited guest of the Hawaii Public Health Association gave me the opportunity then uh, in yesterday and the day before to meet with uh, folks from, the, uh, from uh, Hawaii Pacific and from the, 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 the University of Hawaii, thank you very much. <laughs> it's been <laughs> still dealing with jet lag. Um, with those academic institutions and, and speaking with the students and, and connecting them to the Hawaii Public Health Association. But then also, uh, it was just yesterday, I had lunch with the state health director uh, in Hawaii to talk about uh, uh, the uh, uh, national accreditation of, of the state health department uh, and had a very, very good conversation with her about the value of that. Uh, so, so those are all sorts of at the systems level. You know, it's not not writing a paper on 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 uh, uh, brain, you know, uh, brain uh, neuroscience or something. Uh, but this is really about systems collaborations, which is really a little bit more what we focus on in in public health. It's, it's the population level stuff. Sure, uh, Ethan, can you get a handle from Tom on where we are in the continuum of this conference? How far into it are we? What are we doing right now? What programs are going right now? And what programs have, have yet to happen? Well, in terms of the conference, we're basically almost done with it. Uh, yeah. we, we're in, I think, the very last session or the next to the last session of three days of conferencing. Uh, it started with some sort of pre-conference activities on Wednesday, some rather extended dialogues where we looked at the same issues we had dealt with last year and, and saw what progress have we made on the whole built environment issue? What progress have we made on, on these, these fronts that we were tackling and we talked about last year? Then we have that Wednesday evening, we had the uh, annual meeting of, uh, of the HPHA. The membership got to sort of hear an update on the year's activities and all got to meet Tom. And then we burst into a conference all day yesterday and all day today basically with many different panels on different topics uh, ranging, as Christian was saying, from from A to Z, basically. Mm -hmm. and, and these, these conferences are, are wonderful. I've, I've had an opportunity uh, in, in a variety of roles with the American Public Health Association to, to participate in a, in a number of different affiliates, uh, so the state level um, uh, conferences that are a little bit shorter than the national one, but it's, it's really interesting to see the parallels that exist from in, in, the, in the presentations the issues that are being talked about, the dissemination of information, whether it's programming, uh, uh, best sort of best in emerging practices and programming, or it's uh, advocacy, public health, you know, advocacy issues, or uh, more scientific sorts of things. There, they they really do parallel, and it's nice to see that that we're not as disjointed as uh, as we might. be given the very broad diversity mm -hmm. of the field of public health mm -hmm. that we really are uh, it's by accident but we really are hanging on the same out of the same playbook so I'm glad to glad to see that yeah we have some nice pictures we were showing some nice pictures while you were talking Tom about people getting together and it looks like a very happy and, and satisfied group of uh, staffers and participants in the conference but now that it's almost over I wonder if I could ask you what what you'd be taking back with you what are the memorable most memorable conferences or lessons or, you know, revelations that you have had or seen during this conference? I mean, aside from meeting Ethan Allen and aside from <laughs> being on ThinkTech. Yeah, yeah, well, well, well Ethan, Ethan is, is, is one of a number of, of uh, just wonderful folks that I've met here, uh, again, both at the association, at the universities, and, and uh, at, the, at the state health department. Um, the, the, you know, there's the, there's the public health stuff I'll take back, but this is Hawaii. I've never been to Hawaii. And so, so a, a, lot of, a lot of the conversations I'll have with folks um, will probably start off talking about Hawaii. And then, and then 
then uh, devolving, if you will, to, to public health and, and, and issues there. Um, one of the one of the things that one of the messages will, that we'll probably go back with is is how the the, the national association and the and the uh, the local affiliate can support and sustain one another uh, in terms of our, our our dissemination of information, our public health, public health advocacy work, and so forth. Hawaii is really leading. The, one of the things that I learned as a, as a product of, of being here is Hawaii truly is leading in some of the, the uh, public health advocacy and policy work, uh, whether it's w with regard to the importance and the communication of the importance of the impact of climate on health, or whether it's the, uh, the, what you're doing with tobacco and, and the, uh, and the, and the age of folks are, are able to purchase tobacco or uh, you know, sugary drinks and, and things like this. You're, you're, really are, you're setting an, an example that is so valuable for the rest of the country. And, uh, and I will do my best to always give you credit for that. Oh, thank you for that. <laughs> thank you for that. That's a, that's a very <clears throat> you know, you can, you can uh, do medical research online for sure, and you can study and see photographs and movies and charts and graphs of people doing medical research and public health research all over the world. But you know, it's different when you get to see them in the flesh. When you Absolutely. get to shake their hands, you get to meet, for example, the state health director, Virginia Pressler, and because then there'll come a time, perhaps, when you need to talk to her or she needs to talk to you. And yes. when you make that call or, or send that email, it's different when you have physically met her, no? Well, and, and you've really described a, a, just an absolutely critical point of, uh, of public health, and that's the relationship building. And whether we're dealing with, uh, in my case, in my, my day job, I mean, the, my involvement with APHA is, is voluntary. But my day job, I'm a, a health commissioner in, in Marion, Ohio, as, as Ethan was saying, and it's all about the relationships, whether it's relationships between the, the, the health officers and the health department and the community. Because you know, if, if we go in and we have the answer, it's the wrong answer. We need to get that answer out of the community, and that that involves a relationship, or whether it's a relationship between the the public health associations, or between sort of again my opportunity through my public health association to meet people like the state health director, who under under any other circumstances. The health commissioner in Marion County, Ohio, is not ever going to meet the state health director of the state of Hawaii. <laughs> so, yep. so, and you're absolutely right. I can send out a group email to every state health director in the country, but I know that I can pick up a phone and <laughs> and call your your state health director and say, "Hey, remember when we had lunch at yep. the at the Tower Marketplace? <laughs> yep. <laughs> Great Gordon Beers, you know." Yep. So, it's, it's a big deal. Well, uh, Ethan, we're almost out of time. I'd like you to close. I'd like you to tell us how you really feel about uh, uh, Christian Boy Gloria and how you really feel about Tom Quaid and otherwise wrap up our discussion today. Should well, I leave for that? <laughs> I, I've been so, really, I've been totally amazed and, and pleased to be a, a, just a small part of this conference and have the, the honor of meeting Tom and, and the, the pleasure of seeing all of Christian's hard work because Christian was really the driving force to, to organize this conference. So it's been really wonderful to see this, see it's all come together, see the, the different groups get together and talk and exchange ideas and, and hopefully some real good collaborations will, will grow out of it. So I think, I think it's been a, a great win-win conference all around. All right. Thank you very much for being here, Tom. Oh, it's been my pleasure. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, Ethan. Aloha, Thank you. you guys. Great conference.